So when it comes to marketing, why is it that even though people are very intrigued by the topic and they love watching videos, they love listening to podcasts, they love reading books on marketing, they hire agency after agency, why is that still somehow people keep getting this wrong? Well, there is a very good reason for it. And it's the same thing for pretty much anything, whether it's getting in shape or raising kids or whatever. And it's just not really understanding the actual reason, the, the main concept behind marketing and its only reason for existence. And if you understood that one thing, what that reason for existence is, well, all of a sudden your decisions around the tactics that you choose to deploy begin to change as the strategy will change and tactics really just support the overall strategy. So what is that one thing? And when you ask that question, a lot of people, some people say it's, well, to build brand awareness. Others say it's to get more leads or to get more people in the doors, to make more sales. And not that any of those are wrong. They're just supporting reasons for the actual number one reason, its main ultimate purpose. And that purpose is to increase revenue. That's it. There's no other reason <laughs> that marketing exists. So if you think about, well, if it's to get brand awareness, well, that's so you can get more leads and you can get more people in the door and then eventually get more customers, right? And all those things along the way, but ultimately it's to increase revenue. And there's more to it than what people think. In fact, there's four Ps of marketing and uh, one of those is promotion. That's it. And that's where most people spend their time. And, and not only do they only spend their time in promotion, uh, but they only spend their time in like, an umbrella within an umbrella within an umbrella of that, which is like Facebook ads, Instagram ads, so on and so forth. But there's a ton of different types of advertising that you can do. And there's within advertising, there's actual marketing and who you're going to go after. And all of these things drive up into promotion. Uh, and then you've got your other P's as well, which we'll dive into here, possibly today, if not in future videos. But now that we understand that, we've got to go, okay, great. So there's four Ps of marketing, but the goal is to increase revenue. And my goal is to really focus on which one of those Ps is going to actually help me uh, increase the most revenue. And so the first thing to do is say, well, let's look at of all the ways that revenue can be increased, which is three, three main ways, where's the lowest hanging fruit for me? Because that's where my strategy is going to go. And so we go, okay, well, what are the only three ways we can increase revenue? And a lot of people know this piece already, but they don't know what to do with that information once they get it. So the first one is get more customers. And I started with that one because that's the one that everyone pretty much focuses on, which ironically enough, that's the least important one. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a second, but getting more customers is the first most commonly used way to get more revenue but is actually the least impactful. Now, of course you need customers in order for the other two to play. So that's fair argument as well. But once you've got customers, there's things that you can do to drive revenue faster than just get more customers and it's more efficient. So one of those other two ways is to increase the dollar per customer. So the amount of money that a customer pays you on a monthly basis. And there's ways that you can do that as well. One of those is to increase price. And, and even that breaks down. You can increase price on only new members. You can increase price on only existing members. You can increase pricing on both. You can also increase pricing on a few people that are existing members. For example, maybe you've got founders uh, rates for some people that were applied six years ago, or maybe you have an increased pricing on some people for three, four years. Uh, and maybe you just want to start with those people, not necessarily all of your customers, like ones that just recently signed under new pricing that you recently had. So increased pricing is, an, is one of them. Another one is to uh, increase ancillary sales. And so if you're a gym, for example, uh, supplements, retail, uh, on average, we're seeing most gyms when we meet with them, they're only doing about three to 5% of their revenue is coming from ancillary sales. So easy numbers, if they had $10,000 in sales, well, maybe like 300 to $500 uh, came from actual ancillary services or products like supplements or retail. And the rest of that came from membership dues. Uh, well, that's a small amount. We see people that are doing between 10 to 15% that are in the higher bracket. 
And we have actually a couple of customers that I've met that are doing 18 to 20 percent. Now, there's something that's really good about that. And I'll talk to you about that because that affects the third point. But another way to increase a dollar per customer is to ascend more of your customers. Right. So that's a, that's a person, by the way. So let's say you looked at your data and you go, wow, only 60 percent of our people are in the second or third tier program. 40% of them are in that first lower tier, like a one time a week option. How do we ascend more of our first tier to our second or third and more of our second tier to our third, right? How do we do that? Because if you're able to do that, even if it's a small percentage of them, you're automatically increasing your dollar per customer. You didn't have that increased revenue, you didn't have to get any more customers. If you're able to increase ancillary sales, same things. If you're able to increase pricing, same thing. And the cool thing is when you increase pricing, even just by like 10% or 15%, that all goes to profit. And when you look at that math and you go, well, what would we, how many customers would we have had to have gained to get that same amount of profit, not revenue, but profit. And when you do the math, you're like, man, we would have needed like four or five dozen customers. That's a lot. A lot of people are afraid to raise pricing or push ancillary sales because they're afraid of losing customers. But the truth is our math shows us that with a 15% or increase or higher, sorry, uh, of price increase, there's a less than 3% churn. Now, when you do the math on that, there is a lot gained. You're making a lot more profit by losing 3% 3 of your people and gaining 15% increase in price or in value from each customer on a monthly basis from the ones that stayed. And you can run that math if you like on your own and you'll see how much better of a decision it is to be okay with losing 3% of your customers in order for that gain. A lot of people just don't like losing any customers. They'll deploy a price increase and they have like three, four people cancel in the first day and they're, they, they go, this is a bad idea. People don't like it. People are getting mad. They're complaining. And it's like, well, yeah, we kind of knew that would happen, but look at all the people that didn't, look at all the people that stayed and what that means to the business going forward. And that brings me to the next step, which is retain more customers or retain them for longer, I should say. So if you can get more customers, you can get them to pay more and you can get them to stay for longer. Those are three ways to increase revenue. You can do any one of those things better. Now, I earlier I mentioned that um, this get more customers isn't as valuable to focus on in most cases as increased dollar per customer or retain customers for longer. Well, here's why. If you can increase the dollar per customer, there are stats that show, there's actually a stat that was a study that was done by HubSpot over the, I think there are tens of thousands of customers that they've got that showed that people that purchase two or more things outside of the initial purchase. So outside of your membership dues, if they bought two or more things, that could be two different types of supplements or supplement in retail, like a t-shirt, or it could be a t-shirt and some pants, whatever. They got two or more things there was an increase of 88% in likelihood of them staying for longer. Now, I want you to think about how important that is. What that means is you're not only getting people to stay for longer, but the people that you're getting to stay for longer are the people that spend more money with you. If you're going to keep anybody for longer, keep the people that are spending more money. Well, the cool thing is studies show that the more people get from you, the more likely they are to stay with you. They're more committed. If I got this Apple Pencil, I'm more likely to stay an Apple customer. If I got the iPad, if I got the watch, I'm starting to get more and more locked in because I'm getting more involved and I'm getting more value from that company. In fact, even ascending people from a one time a week to a two time a week or an unlimited, just something like that increases retention because the number one reason people cancel is because they're not getting results or they're not using it. Well, fine. If we can get them to work out more often, the likelihood of them getting results and using it more, it goes up. Meaning the likelihood of keeping them for longer goes up. And if we're keeping anybody for longer, let's keep the people that are paying higher membership dues and getting better results as we're gonna get better testimonials, better case studies, and we're impacting more lives, which is likely a big part of your mission. So. Now that we look at this, we say, okay, great. 
We want to find ways to get more customers, yes, increase dollar per customer, yes, and retain more. Well, how can we do things to re retain people for longer? Because industry average is about 8 to 12%, depending on modality, meaning that is your attrition percentage. If you're average, you're 8 to 12. Now, I showed 8 to 12 because if you're something like functional fitness or some sort of strength train hit, something like that, you're about an 8%. If you're something a little bit more trendy, like a row, like a spin, like a yoga, uh, that is leaning more towards that 12%. And then stuff in the middle, like Pilates kickboxing is uh, right around that 10, 10 or so percent. But industry best is about 4 to 6%, which is really what we, where we want to play. And then if you're in stuff like semi-private training, you'll see stuff as low as two to 3% as best. But uh, that is uh, that is not very common. It's really specific more to that semi-private training. And personal training is even lower, okay? So when we look at where we are as a company, we have to say, okay, well, where do we stand? So we'll call this one, we'll call this two, and we'll call this three. With number one, get more customers. Well, how many customers do we have? If you've only got like 85 customers, there's a very high probability that getting more customers is going to be your number one focus. How do we just get more customers in the door? Your strategy is going to be based around that. If let's say you go, okay, well, our average customer is only paying $140 a month. In an industry where now people are used to paying 200 to 350 a month in membership dues for a really good group fitness or semi-private program, Okay, great. Well, maybe this is going to be our number one focus. And if you look at your attrition and you say, man, we're at 13% attrition, really anything above eight, right? Attrition. Well, this could be our number one focus. But the goal is what is going to be our number one focus? Because if you want to focus on all three, yeah, we want to get more customers. Yes, we want to find a way to get people to spend more. And yes, we want to keep people longer. Well, all those things are great. It'd be great if all three were really being focused on at a high level at all times, but it's going to be hard to. We're splitting up our mindset too often, and we're going to test things half ass in the marketing side to get more customers. We're going to test things when it comes to pricing and the attention we put into like our programming and, and how we you know decide on what we're going to price our products. And pricing P is one of the four P's of marketing. And a lot of times people just price their programs based on what they see other people do or what they think they buy. And, and really, that's not the way to do it. You're not considering stuff like psychology. And are we using stuff like charmed pricing? Are we using stuff like decoy pricing, uh, bundle pricing? Because if we're not doing that, uh, well, then we're just kind of hoping somebody would buy something that we think we buy, right? And that's not really a, a great way to do it with good pricing psychology. And we're going to dive into that in future videos. If you guys like, I'll do more on this. Um, the, the real smart way to do it is where there's only one really logical option. And, and that option's a no-brainer when the other two options exist. These two options really have one purpose. It's to make this option, the one you want to sell, look like the best deal in town. It's a no-brainer. And so how do we structure that? We'll talk about that in future videos, okay? But the last thing you want to do is make all three options look good. So you go, the one time a week is this, two time a week is that, three time a week is that, and you look at it. They go, man, they said they wanted to think about it. I think that's a smoke screen. No, maybe it was something they needed to think about because your options were all good. And they needed to decide of all those three, which one am I most likely going to fit in? Am I going to come two times a week? Am I going to come three? But really what we want them to do is go, damn, that of course I want to do this option. It makes all the sense in the world. So we're going to talk about price and psychology as well as the other P's as well. So continue to follow and I'll make more as I see that you guys are getting value. Um, so the main takeaway that I wanted you all to focus on today is before you work on tactic and tactic and tactic and all these different tactics and tactic could be Facebook ads where you run this offer or run this promotion or Instagram ads or we let's do a Black Friday promo or let's find a way to get people to refer people or all these are considered tactics that should support an overall strategy right? That's the idea. This is our mountaintop. It should support the strategy. We've got to first decide on what is our strategy. And we decide on the strategy by paying attention to the, where the lowest hanging fruit is. And once we have that, then all the tactics 
support that strategy that makes the most logical sense. Okay, so hopefully this video was valuable for you. Uh, we're going to be diving deeper into all of these areas. And we talk about a lot of this stuff. In fact, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we do trainings just like this. This is actually the training we did this morning in one of our power calls. And so uh, somebody asked that I do more videos like this. And so Edwin, thank you for pushing me to make more content on this kind of stuff. I know it's helpful. I know not everybody can work with us right off the bat. For those of you that can, we'd love to give you an accelerated path. For those that can't, hopefully this will help you get to that point where we can work together on a deeper level. In the meantime, see some immediate success. So more videos to come. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, we'll see you in the next one.